I need a half person. Oh, how about make a marriage? Hello. Is this plugged in? Yeah. I bet the battery is dead. My headphones are also on. Hold on. Hello. You said it was plugged in? Yeah, but the battery might be dead now. What? I think it is. No, now I gotta stop. Testing. Yeah, it works. <laughs> My headphones weren't working yet. No. Um, you saying that to me or something else? We'll wait a few minutes for everyone to get set up and ready. You were looking at books. Yeah. What's I gonna get something out of a book? I can't remember. It's hard to get old. My feet are that gross, aren't they? They're gross. Now you're gonna be thinking about Oh, you can really see my pimples with this. It's like a facelift. Jill likes your hat. I didn't know um, it said that. It was say LGBT it says, it says with the back. Make America gay again. But what's the back? Oh, it does. oh, equals equality. <laughs> We're all equal. <laughs> um, what, what, how many people do we have? I can't see that. I'm going to just join oh, okay. another minute. We're giving people a couple more minutes. Renee, I've got your tutu panty email. We'll send all of those out today. And Elizabeth, um, you can send any two panty sizes from 27 up to 34. And we will send you uh, yesterday's recording tonight. And today's recording will go out tomorrow. And um, I didn't know if everybody saw, I put the Pretty much everybody's already done the classical tutu course, but for the few people that didn't, um, I'm trying to entice you to buy all the other days of it. I sent everybody the link to the first day of classical tutus because it just has the bosque, which is essentially what we already did, but it also has the panty. It's the same panty we use in our romantic tutus. So um, instead of spending today just sewing a panty, we'll kind of look at a panty, but um, you can just watch that other webinar to see the steps of sewing the panty. And then if you're interested in buying the other day two and three of the classical flat tutu, just let me know and we can sort that out separate. Um, I remembered what I was gonna grab. I'll be right back. What? The I wonder how much my bottles show during this class when I bend over. A couple people asked about the clowns. And they are for ice skaters. Like a big group. They just compete against other groups, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go.
Yeah, like a show. They're all back there. And Rick and Sabina right there. Sewing more. Oh, I found the battery. Huh. Amazon wants $1,775 for a hardback copy of Dressing for Ballet. What? It's the only one for sale. I, I found a couple cheaper ones. They'll come back in stock. They'll come back. Or check eBay too we'll every show once in a while. Have you checked the price recently to see if it's higher? It might be higher. Or lower? <laughs> What's it called again? I'm I looking don't it even up. see it. Ready? It's right there. Where? Isn't that the Ico one? Yeah, he's not coming anyway. No, he's not. Oh, he's far away. I just did it to be nice. It's 139 bucks online now. What? This was a couple thousand. That's what I mean. We should have taken advantage. Oh. It was thousands. Should I show him? Tell him this is a good book to get. This is a good book to get. This is one that was thousands of dollars. But it went down. But now it's 130 on Amazon. But this is the first print of it, and they didn't print it very much. Are you not ready? No, I thought I printed out the page when it was $4,000. I didn't. I mean, I believe you. I saw it. It was so, thousands. Can I show everybody my Show us your favorite book. Yeah, you can tell. Show and tell. Travis is showing his favorite book, Dirk du Soleil, Costumes, 25 Years. This is a lot of, of inspiration. A lot of inspiration. Good colors. Good colors. Nice textures. Textures. <laughs> Beating, English, et cetera. French and Chinese. English, and French, French, Chinese. Explanations. Okay, we're Travis good. speaks none of those languages. <laughs> we'll start over there, but I'll say hi. A lot of people say hi to Rick and Sabina. Hi, everybody. They say hi. Let me get this hooked on. Okay, we're ready to rock and roll. Um, we're going to first look over at the tutu that we started yesterday. And I'm going to show you what has been done on it that we talked about. And then um, I'm going to show you what's next. So can I get, I can get to it, right? We've got this new mic contraption. We'll see how well it works. You know, if we can sell 500 more, you can move that. If we sell 500 more webinars, I'll get a cordless mic. That's the goal before the day is over, 500. No, uh -uh. I'll bring this closer too. I set up too many obstacles in the room today. Um, let's bring this over here. So here's where we're at in the night, and we're going to do more on this. I've got my top layer. Yeah, I'll back up a teeny bit. Um, here's what we have done so far on this. I still got to mess with the microphone. Um, I need to button it lower. I need to lose about 50 pounds. It's the camera. It's the camera. Um, so let's kind of lift up her layers and kind of review what happened yesterday. So we've got our, our bosque or our basque down there. And this very first, the shortest layer is the one that I applied. Remember, we cut that strip of netting to give it a little bit of body. So you can see there's the stitch right there. This is the layer that's got a piece of netting added to it to give it just a little bit of weight. So when she spins, that little bit of netting is going to help keep the tool from going in between her legs. It still might, but it's going to help. And I fiddled with it a little bit before I committed to how I was sewing it. I put um, the net side actually to her leg because I wanted to make sure that the tool didn't get hung up on this piece of net. Um, and it needs a little bit of steam, which we'll do here a little later. But this one, we cut three widths of 54, so there's just not as much fabric um, around her legs 
and then the fabric gets fuller as we go up the skirt. But if, if we were gonna cut this T length, if we were gonna cut this like down to her ankle almost, you'd want at least four widths of 54 for your inside layer so that it's got plenty of room to open up uh, and, and you know spin out from her body. So we have our shorter one, which we added this piece of stiffer net to. And you can see too, it falls more like a skirt that's got horse hair in the hem. It's falling with a little bit bigger folds to help hold it away from her body. But this is this is just if you want to, you know, you don't have to do this. And another thing that I was thinking about, um, I was looking at some pictures of some ballet Omaha skirts. You could also cut this layer since this piece of net is going to show a little bit if you have only three or four layers to your skirt. We've got five. Um, I looked at some old Omaha pictures, and, and I think this layer is actually a couple inches shorter altogether just to help keep it hidden up in there. Um, but you can cut it even, too, if you're having more stuff covering it. Then we have our next slightly longer layer of the pale green. is going to go down over that. So now we're to four widths of 54. And these inner two ones are railroad cut. Then our acid green is also four widths of 54. And as I've put the, the, the first layer against her body, I just put even the whole way around, this one with the net on it, because it was only three widths of 54. So I didn't have much extra to smash in at the hips. But the second layer of pale green and the layer of acid green, I put my ruffles on in the front just as they laid. And then I smashed a little bit of extra at the side to keep to keep the hem of it all even because it's like a classical tutu, the girls in oval. Then now I'm to putting on my layer that we cut on the cross or cut more traditional. And remember, cut it all on the cross if you're netting um, curls and, and buckles when you pull on it. But you'll see here now I've got I've got four widths of 54 of my wine and it's ruffled with extra I didn't ruffle it to completely match. I wanted my layer to be a little bit longer when it was done so that I have extra that I can fit in at the sides. So in a minute when we go to the sewing machine, I'm gonna be pinching this extra in so that I have just a little more evenly over the side. Um, and it, it keeps the hem a little more even. And I like it when the sides are just a little bit fuller because it gives the girls a tiny bit of a hip which makes their waist look smaller. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna to go to the sewing machine and put this on. So I'm gonna unhook this. And we're doing pretty good. With all of our math and monkeying around yesterday, everything is hitting at the exact same spot. Um, and I can start to see that the back dips down a tiny bit, which probably won't show on camera, but it's working. And again, you can just go straight around. And I'm going to make a handout this weekend, too, to better explain what we did. Because my brain was fried yesterday. But I don't have an excuse. I don't. So I'm going to start at the back. Oh, I just stabbed the pin in my shirt really deep into my tummy. Ow. Oh, that hurt. I pulled it out. Like the whole rest of Yeah. Like, like a good, I had to pull it out. I, I yanked it out. That was, that hurt. Ouch. Feels like I just got a shot. I should have used the safety pin. Um, so just like the classical tutu on the panty, we've got our two inch seam allowance here. We don't want the netting to go in to the seam allowance, especially on the hook side, because this is gonna get folded back. So I've got a like a medium zigzag. My machine goes from one to five. So I'm gonna do like almost a three and almost a three. When calculating your layer length, do you ever mm -hmm. make the top layer longer? Yes, that's a good question. Somebody said, uh, when calculating the layer lengths, can you make the top layers longer to go over the poof? The, this time around, we did it to try to get them hit to hit exact, and it seems like they are hitting pretty exact. But if you wanted, you, as you work your way up, you could make each top, each higher up layer a half an inch longer or an inch longer 
to make sure that if anything, it matches the edge or is longer. But this one, this one, the edges seem to be lining up pretty, pretty good. And actually, see with this class, we have the problem that I'm talking while I'm sewing. Um, I have this extra, right? And I said I want to evenly fit it in over the side. I didn't evenly fit it in over the side. So I want like three inches-ish of my back to be flat. And then I like to fit a little bit more over the side. And if you put it on totally even, it won't change it that much. So I've got, the, I've got my excess to fit in. I'm going to split the difference and put a pin in there. And then as I work my way, I'm going to just... You can pin and pin and pin this in half, but I just like to kind of scrunch it up and lay it down and smash it in while I go. And I'm putting my stitch right on the line. There's my, my line where I seamed it together. I remember we seamed this layer together. You can seam them all together also. It really depends on the net or the tool. Um, I started where the fold is. Somebody asked if I started at the, at the edge of the bosque or where the hooks will be folded, and I started where the hooks will be folded. So now I'm to my center front, so I pinned about six inches flat in the front. If anything, make the front flatter and then add more to the back. Like it's better that her hips or her hips and her butt have more fullness than the front. Now we're back to the side where I'm easing more in. So I'm going to re-squish in my sides. And then um, we'll also, you can also kind of quilt the layers down if you want it to be flatter at her waist, you can just smash the layers down and stitch it, and we'll do that too. Like, there's so many different things you can do, so we're just trying to show you lots and lots of them. So now, now I'm to the bar side. Let's look at the bar side. So this is where the bars would go, um, and... There's a couple different ways people do this. If you think a larger girl is going to have to wear this, you can run the tool instead of stopping the tool at my center back line. On the bar side, if you wish, you can run the tool or the top couple layers of tool all the way to the edge to your, to your two inch seam allowance. Then you can quilt that down or put a piece of net, put a piece of a square of net over that little section and quilt through the piece of net so that you can have bars here, here, and here without having this big runway of white in the center back. And I like to reverse right at my edge. And then I like to just run my zigzag off and reverse at the edge of my seam allowance. Okay. I've got the chicken scissors again today. I thought I grabbed a better pair of scissors. Now I'm going to put my top layer on. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make my middle flat, and then I'm going to make a little bit of my center back flat, and then I'm going to ease the excess a little at the sides. So now we've got a piece that's five widths. I believe we did five widths for our top. So we've got four widths, three widths at the shortest one, and then we've got five widths for our top. And I've already got a pin in my center front, so let me move my machine a little out of the way. So now remember, we did that goofy cutting yesterday so that we can have the back still dip down in the hem match, but now my topmost layer, instead of dipping down, because we're pretending she's wearing this with a leotard, or the waistband is gonna show. So if if we were putting a bodice over this, I just follow the front straight across and dip down the back. And I don't care that this edge shows like this because it's underneath the bodice. The other thing that some people will do is they will put the layer, the last layer on 
upside down and let it flip over and fold, which is totally great too. You just kind of have to decide like, how is it being used or worn? And then make the call. So I'm gonna make my front flat. Like about five or six inches is good. On a little kid, maybe four. And two, on this, I can totally see my bosque through this really sheer tool. So make a little sample and decide, like if this were a performance quality thing, um, and you think the bosque is gonna show, you might wanna flatline your bosque with something thin, you know, don't you don't have to do brocade unless you wanna match your bodice. Um, like if I was gonna flatline this with brocade, I would use my first initial flatlining layer, like cotton lawn or a thin piece of muslin or something so that it doesn't get super duper thick. Now I like to, and the, I like to fold just a tiny little bit back when I start. And then later we're gonna seam these layers up too because we don't want this great big opening in the back. So I'm gonna make a little bit flat at the back. Boy, our weather in Chicago went from winter to summer just like that. I'm gonna split the difference. So I'm gonna just kind of use my hands to split the difference. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to kind of squish in the leftover, the extra. So I'm gonna put a little fold. So now if you if you wanted bars to go beyond the center back, you can put the layer all the way to the edge, but know that if you're gonna have a bar right here, the netting is just gonna get shredded. So what you can do is either, you know, do like quarter inch apart and quilt this down flat wherever the bars are gonna go, or you can just take a piece of heavier netting or like a square of sew shear lay that there and stitch around it because if you've got a hook going into the tool, the tool's gonna get ripped. But for today, we're gonna stop right at the center back. Put a pin there. Make a couple inches flat. Then if, if you were wanting the butt to be fuller, just evenly put it all the way from from the front. You could still make your front flat, but put all the extra from the front distributed all the way to the back if you wanted to make the back fuller. And sometimes you do. Like there's a lot of hats a romantic skirt wears. Sometimes it's a comedy, sometimes it's a, a character role, sometimes it's a peasant, sometimes it's a queen. So now I've got to ease my extra in at the sides. And you make your thread match. I'm just using white because it's what's on my sewing machine. And since this one's the top, I'm going to take just a little more time to try to ease this in rather than just sticking it down. I'm going to try to arrange it a little nicer. And then what we're gonna do next is put a waistband on it. Rachel, will you make me a little note to send the hook and bar handout too? Cause I know there's some new folks. We're gonna just send a handout for the hook and bar. Um, it's very, very clear. And there's also a video putting the hooks and bars on online. We're so excited that we've got some brand new names. We've got some brand new people. And we're breaking into Germany now too. We haven't had we haven't had Germany represented, but now we do. We should start a map with pins, keep track of everybody. So now I'm back to easing in. I'm at my last side.
another thing that's handy for this too is some people use their awl like a stiletto and or an extra finger that you can slide closer to the machine but I definitely find I have a better time putting it on even by, by not loading it up with pins like when I load this up with pins I find you kind of just go for it and sew and the spot in between the pins might not be as even as you really think it is I met a lady at Ballet West that would even just start with a great big piece of her rectangle of tool and use a stiletto or an awl like this and just jam it all in as she sewed and never even gathered anything. It's true. You could do, it's hardcore. It's doable. It takes a bit of time, but any anything, if you practice it, you get faster and faster. So now I've got my flat little bit. Now I'm going to just stitch it. I'm going to back stitch. And in, on this side, I just run it off to the end because it's easier for me to trim the thread at the end. Okay. So next we're going to put the waistband on. So if this was going to show, if this was going over a leotard and it was going to show, you might want to um, come up with grow grain ribbon or something that matched either your leotard or matched your netting instead of just white. But I'm going to use just white. So we said, I think, that our waist was like 24 or 25 inches the other day. I'm going to see if I wrote it down. I didn't write it down. But let's look at a couple different ways that people like to do the waistbands with these. One way, one super duper fast, perfect, effective, easy way is to use just elastic. So I've got some three-quarter inch elastic here. You could use one inch elastic. It There's no... There's no rule about that. But one super fast way is in your seam allowances at the center back, leave your elastic flat. So I'm going to just pin that and I'm going to walk. I'm not stretching my elastic yet. I'm just kind of walking it along. And if you've got a ruler in your measurements, you can just use that too. So I'm just walking my elastic along to my other center back. And then Here's my other center back. So right now my elastic isn't stretched at all. So you can come backwards about three inches, pin that, move that to the center back, leave the rest of this flat. So now your elastic is smaller than your top. So, so you can see now my elastic is smaller than the distance of the top of my bosque. You have to pull the elastic, pin the middle. I use my teeth. And you're, you're using your elastic or your ribbon or whatever method you choose um, to finish off uh, the top. So you want to make sure that it kind of covers up all your other zigzags and your, your top edges of all the tool and stuff. And I just divide it out into about four spots so that I've got an even amount to squish with my elastic. And then, if you're doing just elastic, um, you're gonna, you can zigzag it on, and you can zigzag on the bottom edge, because you want to make sure that the bottom edge of the elastic is covering up all the unattractive little bits of the top, gathering and the top sewing but then I usually come back and do another zigzag at the top just to make sure the elastic doesn't fold down so that's kind of the idea there uh, some people too also like to completely encase the top with elastic so that you don't have a visible seam allowance on the inside so if you want to encase the top with elastic you just take the same length of elastic come back behind it you can sew the front, then sew the back, or you can pin it so that you can sew the front and back at the same time. So you can have elastic in the front and in the back. I tend to think that the doubled up elastic is a little bit too thick and kind of like the way elastic works. The more times you stitch over it, the less stretchy it is. But that's it's totally your preference. 
Um, then let me show you one more way that people like to do this, and that's to make um, uh, a non-stretch waistband. So this is just some some cheapo white. Uh, this is Prussian tape, or it's like grow grain ribbon, but it's got a little bit of a shine to it. And this is this is three quarters of an inch too. Actually, this is a little less than three quarters of an inch, but it's more than five eighths. So grow grain ribbon works too. Um, does anybody need to see what grow grain ribbon is, or we're pretty aware what grow grain ribbon is? If somebody needs to see grow grain ribbon, let Rachel know. So you can use grow grain ribbon this same way. So you would want to know the waist, and then you can lay your ribbon down that matches your waist and zigzag it. You can also fold it over and have it doubled. But one thing that I like to do is to add a piece of elastic into it. So I'm gonna figure out what my total length is. So if you were adding this elastic into it and it wasn't underneath the bodice, you would want to make your ribbon in elastic and everything. You'd wanna dye it all so the color matches. Um, so what I've done is I've just measured my top bit. So this is the whole length of my bosque here. I'm gonna find the middle, and I'm also gonna mark where my center backs are. So they're two inches in. I have a little gauge on my sewing machine. You can mark that with a pin. I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie. So I've got my center backs, I've got my middle, now, if you want to be super, super accurate, you can fold it in half, find the side. And if you want to be like even more super accurate, remember we scooted our side seam a little bit to the back. So I'm going to scoot my, my actual side a little bit to the back. And then to kind of like, so this is going to last longer than a big long piece of elastic because we all know that the elastic over time will die. But the other thing you can do is on your ribbon or grow green or whatever, if you want, you can insert a piece of elastic so that there is still a little bit of stretch which will help it fit a few different girls. Um, this is more, more company-ish, you know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put like, I'm gonna cut two three inch pieces of elastic. And then what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna actually, so if my three inch piece of elastic fits right there and we just sew it on, nothing is stretching. We wanna fit it into a space that's smaller than that. So I'm going to take and I'm gonna cut. So if we look at it this way too, um, we're gonna insert elastic into the tape. If we said that's where our elastic matched with like a quarter inch seam allowance and we're gonna overlap it, you actually wanna take away about like three quarters of an inch to an inch. So we're eliminating some of the length of our piece here. So we don't, because we want to have to stretch the elastic, right? We want to make it shorter. So actually to eliminate it, I need to go this way. We want to make it three quarters of an inch tighter. Can you tell this is the first time we're doing this class and it's just not like on auto in my brain? So there, no, no, I still don't have it right. We want to make the elastic have to stretch. So I want to take away three quarters or an inch more than the space of the elastic. That's what we're doing. So now, we have, when this is in there, the elastic actually needs to stretch a little bit. Okay. So then I'm gonna just repeat that on the other side. Another even easier way to do this is just insert your pieces of elastic and then take away, you know, stretch it and take it away from the center back. So now I'm gonna just match my cuts on this other side. I have a cut there. So we're just making the, the waist with of this white Prussian smaller 
so that we have to stretch the elastic a tiny little bit. And it's going to stretch just at the sides. So now I'm going to insert my other piece of elastic and just overlap it flat. Don't, don't make a seam like this because it's going to be too much of a bump. So we're just going to pin this on and we're going to zigzag. We're going to kind of overstitch over the edges so that there's no weird fray stuff happening. So all we've done is we have a waistband now that has a little bit of stretch in it. And there's another really great material out there that is sometimes hard to find or is sometimes out of stock at places like Richard the Thread. Uh, and it's called Peter Sham or Peter Shim, depending on who you talk to. And it's it used to be cotton, but it's synthetic now usually. And it's a really heavily starched stitched band. And they used to use it um, kind of as stay tapes in fitted period women's clothing or like some 20s dresses or Edwardian dresses would have a big wide piece of Peter Sham with hooks on it so that you could hook the, a belt tighter than your bodice so that your bodice didn't look like, you know, it was the, the only thing holding on to your body. Another place it's used is like when you have a strapless dress, um, a good strapless dress will have an inside belt that hooks out of a non-stretch thing so that you can hook that belt a little bit tighter than the dress fits. And that belt is usually hooked to the boning at the side and the front, and that keeps your strapless dress from falling down. And it's sticky? Oh, really? It's got that like silicone coating on it. If anybody wants an amazing supply book, get the Klaus Schreck supply book. They've got all those elastics that have like silicone and stuff on it. They have some pretty cool stuff. They're German. Oh my gosh, we have some, we have German people on our radar now. I'm so excited. I hope they know about Klaus Schreck. Huh? German tutu. Oh, yeah, like the Spanish German tutu we were making in the other class. In the classical class, we did a red, black, and gold tutu, but it just looks like the German flag. Okay, so now I'm going to put the center front of this to my center front. And I have a little tiny break. You know, I use tracing paper on here. I can kind of see where the break in my tracing line is, so I know that's where the front is. Don't draw on this stuff with a Sharpie. So now, now I have, see, now I have to stretch this a little bit so that it reaches to my back on both sides. So we're using a little bit of flex there. And I'm going to zigzag the bottom of it on. So I'm going to try to cover up what's ugly on my net. If you want, this is the hook side. So this is going to get folded back. And this little raw piece here, you can zigzag over later. Um, if you're using uh, a nylon or a plastic something, you can also just burn this edge. So that you don't have an extra bump. And the thing that's going to want to happen now is your tool always wants to get kind of folded weird up underneath there. Don't let that happen. So now I've got to stretch this. And it's not a ton of stretch. It's not like the if we were doing the whole thing with elastic. And another good thing to think about is if, if this is getting buttoned into a bodice or if your classical tutu or a romantic tutu or a skirt is getting buttoned into a bodice, let the bodice be the tightest thing because the buttons are going to hold this up. So you may want to draft your bosque or fit your waistband not super tight so that the girl just doesn't have one tight thing after another tight thing. You can let, you can let the bodice be, you know, what squishes in the last inch of her waist or what it, or what. 
whatnot. So we're to the middle. Now I should pin my center back because I've got to stretch this again. So I don't need a stretch until I'm back to the elastic. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm going uh, a little ways up on my tape just to the edge of the tape because I don't want the bottom edge, I don't want the bottom edge of this to flip up. So I'm like catching right over the edge, but not letting it come far onto the net, onto the tool. You know, because we don't want it to look homemade. Which is why if this were for a show, we would die. We would dye the twill. Or flatline it with something that's not super duper thick. Okay, so I'm stretching this a little bit. And I'm going to put a pin here so I don't lose the little bit that I stretched. And then just keep arranging. It's definitely less wrestling than making a classical tutu. Well, usually. We go pretty nuts with some of our romantic skirts. So now, I'm just a little bit off. I'm gonna just cut that off. Then, I like to go back and put another zigzag at the top, just to keep it all as flat as it can. So see, we have a little bit of stretch, but not a lot. And you can play with that too. Like, like you could cut 26 inch waists and use the elastic to make them all 24 inches. So you could fit a 24, 25, and a 26 inch girl. Now I'm going over the edge and catching the other side. And if you want, like if you've got little pieces of tool that are sticking out above the top of your waistband, now's where you can just give them a haircut. Like there, I've got a little piece of tool. I'm gonna just give it a haircut. Yeah. I've even got a little piece of seam allowance from my side seam. I want to give that a little haircut. Stuff will only look as nice as you make it. And then there's like, we always tell people that there's kind of like a balance too. Like, you know, we get a lot of folks say, oh, I figured out my hours and I made $2 an hour on this costume and it cost me a relationship and my dog doesn't like me. But then we we find out all the like little extra steps that they're futzing with that are like good, but it's like, can you figure out how to make that go faster? Or can you can can you eliminate a step so that you've made money? Or, you know, maybe you just need to charge more. It's a balance. It's all about balance. Okay, so now that we've got that on. We're going to send everybody the hook and bar video, but basically what I would do next with this, and we're going to look at hooks and bars too, is I would figure out how many spaces, like one, we're going to say this is going to get four, two, three, four. We would put our four hooks on, fold this back, and actually sometimes what I'll do is when I fold this back, I'll just stitch it all the way through through the netting underneath the top layer. So I'm gonna fold this back. And what you can do is lift your top layer, your topmost layer out of the way, right? Get him out of there, because we're gonna disguise something that's not super attractive. So I've got my top layer folded out of the way. I'm making sure that all my layers underneath are indeed running down. And then you can just stitch right below the waistband. Don't go to the top of the waistband because it'll make a weird thing in your top layer. So go below your waistband. Hold all of this stuff. You can pin it more than I did. Hold all of this underneath really nice. And stitch that back. 
so that way your hooks that, that you'll get the video we'll get the video link to for that that way your hooks will be on and your uh, your overlap is folded back and you've done a little reinforcing in there so we've stitched right through these guys just to hold our overlap down but then the top layer is going to disguise that and it's going to look nicer so there is that and then you would put your bars on the other side so let's put this on the dress form and admire it and then we're going to look at some tutus and then i'm going to show you the way we figure out how to make that what we call a degas styled tutu and a um uh when you cut the net into gores we're going to look at that too so we're going to rachel and i'll switch spots i'll take a sip of water would you fill my water up, Sabina? Thank you. I love this color combination. I have a couple of questions. Yes, yes. Would you reinforce the bar side? Somebody asked if I would reinforce the bar side. One thing that you can do, so um, we talked earlier. Oh, here, I'll stand. I'll stand here. No, no. Here, point it right here. Um, somebody asked if we would reinforce the bar side. There's a couple of things you can do. Um, this, we usually make the a romantic yoke or bosque, whatever you want to call it, not super duper tight so there's not tons of strain on it. And as long as you've got something reinforced at the waist, the tightest part, that's going to keep stuff pretty much from ripping out. And the other thing you can do is if you want, you can take a piece of sew shear or um, let me just cut a piece of this English stuff just to use as like a stand-in. Another thing you can do in when you're building your bosque, so I just have a little extra square. If you want, when you're building your bosque, you can take a piece of muslin or, or thin cotton lawn or sew shear, and you can put it on the back side or the front side. So you can add an extra strip behind your center back. So here's my center back line. Let me just sharpie it in. So if this was your center back, you can cut a piece of another lightweight fabric that's wider than anywhere where your bars are gonna go, zigzag that on or quilt it on so that you have another layer of structure. And then when you put your bars on, then when your bars go on over that, there's another thing to keep it from ripping. Alternately, if you think you wanna run your tool all the way over here to the center back, if you don't want your tool to stop at the center back, but you want it to be able to fit a larger girl, you would run, what we've done, is we run the tool all the way to here. Then we take a square of something similarly colored and we stick it right over all the tool and we zigzag around it. And that's where we put our hooks, or our bars, sorry, that's where we would put the bars, smash an extra piece over it so that if this does have a bar here and way out here at the edge, you're not going to rip the tool off, but do know that you're going to see that little square in the back from girl to girl. Um, and the times that we've done that, we kind of cheat. Like we might put the top two layers over to here, but leave the bottom layers at the center back line. But then you have to like kind of be goofy with how you hide your bars in there. Um, and the other thing actually that I should have done before we left the sewing machine all of your layers now right the center back of this sucker is open you're going to come with the sewing machine and stitch all of your center back so i've got a center back in my one hand and a center back in my other hand you're going to put the right sides together or overlap them and you're going to actually stitch your center backs closed and i usually tell people to leave like nine or ten inches open at the top so the one of the finishing steps is to connect separately. I've seen some tutus on rentals in different shops where they take two or three layers and just stick the center backs together instead of them being separate. You know, it depends on how soon was the show opening to when they finished. So you would stitch all your separate layers. You'd go through and take each layer and stitch your center backs together so that the skirt isn't open in the back. I think you kind of touched on it, but do you put multiple rows of bars on a romantic? Yeah, somebody said, can you put multiple rows of bars on a romantic tutu? Absolutely. 
and we did just touch on that. So let's go put this on the dress form and then look at some different skirts. Oh, look at Basil. He's so cute. All the dogs are here today. It's a dog dog party. Total dog party. There's only two dogs. Oh, they're not. Yeah, Louie's not here. I thought he was just being an angel. They got to get their time in together before they come play at your house. So, so imagine your center backs are sewn up. Yeah. And we'll get we'll get everybody that hook and bar thing. Because we want to show you have a big long pile of stuff to show you, which I think is really good. We're gonna look and discuss some stuff. So now the last thing we would do with this sucker um, is uh is that box of tacking stuff. It's over there. Do you see it? It's under it's on top of that hat box. Um the next thing we would do, do you see it? is steam all of this. And what I like to do with a romantic skirt, oh, I had the, Rachel's been looking for this pair of pliers for a couple days, I had them. I like to just take an elastic or some pins and I like to kind of address and zhuzh each layer separately. So I would steam. Now remember, on when we did the classical tutu the other day, we were like smashing the, the netting, not smashing, but we were getting really close to the netting. The tool will melt faster than you can imagine. So you've got to be fast and you don't want to like touch, touch it, okay? So we're just going to come in and layer by layer. Now the more you do this, the flatter the whole thing is going to get. So if you want a poofy tutu, don't steam it too much. So we can lay the net, you'd lay the next layer down. And you can also hang these suckers upside down. Um, will help keep them from getting super duper flat. Hang them from the crotch instead of from the waist. So you just come in. And we like the irons that blast steam. We like the steam generators instead of the steamers. With the steamer, I always end up burning my hand. So just kind of. And then the other thing, too, is, you know, I... Working in, in the union, we're backstage with different people. I see a lot of dressers do this. They take a romantic skirt and they yank on it and then steam it. And then pretty soon the hem is just this wavy nightmare. So don't, you know, even though like your brain wants you to pull it down, don't always listen to your brain. Oh, I'm about out of water. But you guys get the idea. You get what's going on. And then just lay the next one down and the next one down. I think we're actually getting a, um, uh, I don't think so. I don't need more water, I don't think. Um, so, or is it gonna just make noise the whole time? Let me, I'm gonna unplug the iron. Um, so right, this still needs more steam, but you're not, you don't need to watch me steam this the whole day. Um, oh, she's drunk. So you wanna get all of this arranged. And, and if you, there's people that like to tack these things and there's people that don't like to tack these. It's your call. Um, tacking, that like it's a curse and a blessing. So we're gonna put some big loops of, of pearl cotton embroidery thread through this skirt. And what that's gonna help with is it's gonna help it come away from her body. All, it's gonna help all the layers come away when she spins. But it also, if she gets caught up on something or caught up on someone, when you have the tax in it, you're more likely to have it all just rip. Um, so there's a couple things you can do. When you tack it, some folks will leave the top layer completely out of the scenario. They'll leave the top layer completely untacked so that if something rips, it's underneath and it's easier to Frankenstein, you know, you end up with those weird, like horrible patched chunks of netting. If you leave the top layer out of the scenario, um, it's, it, you're less likely to rip the top. So that's what we're gonna do our tacks. We're gonna leave the top out of the way. And I don't usually put too many in, um, but we use the same kind of thread. This is just pearl cotton. 
We use pearl cotton like we do on the flat classical tutus. And we use a great big needle. And there's different, there's different thicknesses of this stuff. Um, we get it in spools. This, I think it's DNC. We get it in these little tiny spools. But this one that I've got in my hand right now is, oh, this is DMC, pearl cotton. I wonder if it says this is 25 meters of 5 gram. Would that be the thickness of it? This is 5 gram pearl cotton. So when you're tacking through here, we have a more, since we put this piece of netting on the bottom of our inner layer, that's like a more logical place to put a tack because that piece of netting is stronger than the tool. But when you tack this, you want to kind of open stuff up a little bit. You don't want to tack great big folds or, or chunks because otherwise it's not going to open even when she's rotating. So I'm going to take from, from the inside actually. I want my knot to be on the inside. And, and I want to kind of make sure that I'm letting everything, oh I lost a piece of the microphone. Um, I want to make sure that I'm not making the layer shorter or longer. Is it still working? All right, all right, all right. We'll deal with that later. Um, you want to you want to like make sure that you're not tacking it crooked, you know, at, when right from the beginning. So I'm going to start on the inside, and I'm going into that piece of um, that piece of net that's on the bottom, and I'm going to just go. I'm going to I like to do about a half an inch. So I've got like a finger, like a little like a, a pinky's width between my two tacks, not between my two tacks, but between where I've entered and exited the fabric. Then you go on the inside, and I probably don't have scissors. Can you hand me those little silver scissors right by the Bernina over there? Thank you. Then I like to leave the tacks like a good three or four inches long. So you're gonna, we've got two threads. Do those two threads show? Yeah. We've got two threads. We went from the inside to the outside. We have like a, a fingers-ish width here. But then on the inside, we're going to tie this. I think the gun rips this stuff out faster than the cotton does. I don't know why, but that's what I, I feel like the cotton thread is just a little more gentle. Yeah, so now if you if you can see, does the tack show through? Yeah, so now we have this big long tack and you, you saw I kind of like evened it out in there. So by having this big long tack through the layers, it's still going to lift up together, but it's going to act more like a, like a flowy romantic tutu. And the long, the long tack is less likely to rip. So if I like go on the inside and I shorten this, if she comes up against something or someone or a piece of lighting, it's just going to all rip out. Um, so that's that kind of tack. And we have the knot on the inside. Another thing that some folks, and I would only put like maybe six around this whole skirt, um, if that. I mean, even four is going to help. And you're always kind of zhuzhing stuff. Um, another thing that some folks will do is when they do their tack, instead of starting completely at the inside, you can get your section, find all the elements that you want to tack together, and you can leave the knot in between the layers. So now I have my layer one is down here, and then I've got two, three, four. I can put my tack like this and tie my knot so that my knot isn't on the inside of her skirt. The knot is hidden between the layers and probably less likely to get hung up on stuff. So now my knot, the tied part of my knot is in between stuff. Do we, somebody asked if we leave the tacks away from the undermost layer. I went all the way to the undermost layer. If the tack is in between, it probably, it shouldn't catch their shoe. Um, if you were doing a longer romantic skirt, I would, I wouldn't put the tacks at the bottom. Like if this were to her, this is just below her knee. So if this were to her calf, 
I would keep the tax still at about knee level. You wouldn't want the tax too low or getting closer to her legs. And actually, if you want to even help prevent the tax from getting caught up, that was a good question. You could also, just to make sure that the loops aren't getting caught at her shoe, you could still take your layer one. Let me find a new spot to do another one. You could take your layer one, fold this back. And if, so like right now, right, if I pull my tack, I can pull it back towards the inside of her dress. If you want, you could even tie a little tiny knot. Just tie an itsy bitsy knot in layer one. Go through your other layers. So now I'm going through two, three, and four with, a, with a, a little bit of space like a finger, and then go down and tie another knot, and that'll help keep it from the loop from getting by her feet. I don't know if that answered the question, but there's, there's more than one way to do all this stuff. Um, but I don't know if we tack, it's kind of like 50-50 that we tack these. Our last big snow scene we did, um, for Vero Beach Ballet, we didn't tack because we liked the really ethereal, floaty look. Houston snow scene a couple years ago that were really long, we did tack. Um, and we had these weird asterisk snowflakes that they made for us. And we actually used the snowflakes to hide the tacking. But now let's lay the top down and talk just a smidge more about this one before we have dress up time. And we're going to dye a piece of tulle, too, and just show you what a dyed piece looks like gathered or ruffled. Um, so you, you're always steam, steaming this before you tack and stuff. So if you want, you can still tack to this outermost layer, but this is going to be the layer that gets like hung up on guys and lighting and stuff. And if there's a ton of tacks through this outside layer, just know that expect it to rip because this is delicate stuff. But you can also tack the whole thing, and then if you want, just put a couple tacks through the outside layer instead of a ton of tacks through the outside layer. Um, and another thing that folks will do, so right, she's pretty poofy here. Another thing that people will do is they will take and go down. So we've got our top layer stitched onto our bosque. A lot of makers... If this is going under a bodice, or you don't want her to be so, so full in the waist, you can smash this down and quilt or add another stitch. You can smash this, steam this, smash it down, pin it, and then sew it, and you're kind of like quilting the top of it down. So, so that's another thing you can do in your effort to keep it flat. I know some folks will even come down a second row and stitch, smash that all to the bosque and stitch it. And some will even do every single row so that it stays really nice and flat to her waist. And then the tool comes out at the bottom or further down the bosque. But if you're doing that, you've got to really make sure to keep it, to keep stuff even. Okay. And it's, 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 uh, you know, there's there's so many different things you can do, and that's another one of them. So let's look at these floofier. So there you can see in the video, you can see that piece of net really clearly added to the inside. Remember to stitch your center backs of all your different layers up. Um, now let's look at one that has a panty joined into it and just different variations of the same ideas. We'll do the butterfly one next. Um, this is for a costume from Little Dancer from the Kennedy Center. And Rachel did this, this one up. It's so cool. It's a butterfly. Um, let's put the skirt on. And then, actually, let's look at the different parts of the skirt before let's, like, take it apart. This hasn't been steamed. It's been hanging in a bag. Um, so this has our panty on it. And we're going we're gonna to look at this at the table a little bit, too. Um, this is more of a like late 1800s style of romantic tutu where there's some layers to keep the fabric away from their body. And this is a version that's it's kind of like a romantic skirt and a square dancing skirt because we have a layer with an extra ruffle on it. 
So this has got a layer that's lower on the panty. So here's my crotch. It's upside down, but it's the easiest way to see it. So it's not super far into her crotch, but like almost at the height of the legs, a little bit above the legs, there's a four inch net ruffle pointing down, pointing towards the floor. Then there's an eight inch net ruffle pointing towards the floor. Then this one's about 14 or 15 inches, another ruffle pointing towards the floor, but it has, we call this can-can. It has an extra ruffle on top of it, like a can-can skirt. And that's gonna make this really big and really filled in when you look underneath it. Then it's got another piece of net that ends up matching the edge. So these first short ones, obviously you can't see the edge of them underneath. They're, they're called a kicker and they're holding it out. Then it's got this layer with a ruffle on it. Then it's got another layer of net. And then it's got a layer of tulle, cut like a romantic skirt now where we're making all the edges pretty much match. And then it has a piece, another piece of tulle, so two layers of tulle, with some glitzy schmutz on it. And you see there's little applique bits. Then there's some feathers hidden underneath it. And then there's a layer of the English tulle, or the English net, but it's really a tulle. Then there's a layer of English net on the top of it. So let's put this on the dress form. So this is kind of a Degas styled skirt or a late 1800s tutu, but with a can-can on it to make it really, really full. And it has the Hollywood cut bosque, which goes high up into the bodice. So let me just hook this on. And um, let me put a pin in the back. So we're gonna examine this closer here. So that high cut bosque is going up, uh, going up into um, the waist of the bodice. And you'll see the top of this doesn't have to be super duper tight because there's button elastics and they're gonna hold, these white button elastics are gonna be what holds this into the bodice. And you'll also see that the top edge of all this stuff is just run, is just laid on and then sewed down. Because if we sewed it up and let it fold over, in this instance, it's going to make it too thick. And you can see we've got all sorts of stuff going on. But let's go to here. So we've got a panty. And the panty just joins to the bottom edge of the bosque. Um, it's just stitched on with a seam. Or you can match up your stitching line and overlap the panty to the bosque to make it flatter. So we've got four inches, eight inches, and then we've got like, this is about 14 with a ruffle on the edge. Then we're going up inches. So this layer is actually 15 inches long. This layer is 16 inches long. This layer is 17 inches long. And then this top one looks like it's about 17 and a half. But hiding little bits in between the layers makes stuff look a little fuller and it makes it look a little more expensive rather than having all the trim and decoration right on the top. So you can even see there's whole feathers hid in there. And this could definitely use a steam. But how cool is that? Let's stick the bodice on just for fun. Because the, the button loops always come up too. So this, this is the boss. Anybody that's in the pattern club, they got sent this boss which pairs to the panty. And the bosque isn't, uh, it's a little bit shorter than the one we did yesterday. This, the sheet of bosques I sent everybody in the pattern club, it'll be for sale to everybody at the end of the month. But um, I put a note in that email that says, the bosque, the Degas bosque I sent everybody is a little short. So you wanna add like about three quarters of an inch to the top of your panty pattern. Otherwise it's gonna be just a little bit tight up and down for the girl. And when you've got this giant fluffy thing and you're not seeing the trunk or the panty like you do more in a classical mm -hmm. tutu, you can leave the panty a little bit loose because she, you know, she doesn't need to be yanked every direction from every side of her body. So now let's look inside the bodice here. You'll see we've got four 
buttons, there's four suspender buttons, two, three, four, um, that are the waist, the suspender buttons are about an inch and a half, two inches above where the waist of this is because we have this tall cut bosk. The bosk goes above the waist. So we've got buttonhole elastic on the skirt and suspender buttons on the bodice. And that makes it easier to separate the two things. And it gives a little bit of flex. So I've got one of them buttoned on. I'm going to just button on the fronts. And you leave like two or three buttonholes so that you can adjust a little bit. You can adjust. Um, where the height of the boss or the butt. Yeah. Yeah. We got questions coming. Uh huh. Somebody asked if the bodice, like this one, has a point at the bottom. How do you keep the skirt from pushing the point out? This bodice here, you'll see, is actually cut. It doesn't quite fit this dress form. You can see that this bodice is cut with a lot of flair so that it follows the silhouette of the skirt. But if you're getting if you're getting this, if your bodice is doing that, you either need more boning in front or there's there's probably means there's something going on with your bodice. But if you're getting this and you don't want it, one thing you can do is figure out on the skirt kind of where the point is. Pin all that down. I feel like I'm like molesting a cat or something. You can figure out where that point is and quilt a little bit of the skirt down. Like by hand, I would stitch through this. I'd base the skirt all the way through to the boss, and that'll help keep the point down. I also know we've got some old Karinskas that were at Houston Ballet where there was a piece of button hole elastic, just not like a strip of button hole elastic, but like a single button hole and then a button hidden down in the skirt and they would just button that point down it doesn't help the girls raise their bodies up you know when they raise up it lifts the skirt a little bit but that's another thing you can do but this one follows the shape of the skirt really really nice on purpose whoa she she fell yes i'm here i'm here Somebody said, besides putting less fullness in the front, how can you keep them from looking pregnant? Make good color choices and color placements and trim placements and bones. And yeah, you. somebody said, yeah, how do you make things not look pregnant? Like you'll see too that the on this skirt, there's fluff coming out pretty high up, but the shape of the bodice is holding it down and giving her more more of a waist. And actually in this, we even clip the seam allowance in the side at the waist to make it go in and then out at the waist. And the way this bodice is boned too, there's a broken bone. So there's a bone that comes from here to the waist, then there's a gap, then there's a little tiny two inch bone, and that's letting this go in and out. Because if we just boned the whole length, it seems like it would push the waist in, but when you bone the whole length, this is what happens. It, it'll go like that, because the bone is gonna hold it out from her body, but when you put a broken bone in, it goes in and out. And we looked for this show, we spent a lot of time in the basements of museums in New York, seeing how some of this stuff was done, actually, in the old timey times. Let's look at another one that's kinda like this. Do to do. -do. Oh, I buttoned it together. I'm like, it won't come apart. Let's do, um, I'll just hold this other, this next one up. We're gonna have a pile of, of skirts here. Um, this was also from Little Dancer, and it's got the high cut bosque, but it's just, a, it's just a more solid color costume. But if we look underneath too, it has the same kind of thing going on. There's some, some of the English net. There's a couple layers of tulle, one, two, two layers of tulle. Then there's a long layer of net. Then there's this party ruffle, a can-can ruffle. And then there's kind of a medium layer and a short layer. So these medium and short layers, you're using to create shape away from their body. You can also do a romantic skirt like we just started with. But if you want at the bottom of the bosque, if you put like an eight inch net ruffle, it will just push the skirt away from her body 
but it will make a poof, you know. You've got to decide, like, is poof what you want? If it's not, don't add all this other stuff. This is a fun one. This is also just a romantic skirt, but it's got more stuff going on. Let's put this one on the dress form and look at it. Yeah, somebody asked if the can-can layer in those last two were netting. It certainly was. Because we're we're using it not for looks, but we're look using the net for structure. Oh, how much wider is the can can ruffle? That can can the, the flat layer on that can can ruffle, let's see if this one has it. Somebody asked if the can can ruffle is wider. It is. So this one has a can can ruffle that's oh, it's like sparkle black, sparkle black. This is still so the butterfly skirt we just looked at and the white skirt we just looked at, the entire skirt is four widths of 54, but for the can-can ruffle, we just set the ruffler at a density. We just pick a density and we make more ruffle than we need and we just stick it on and cut off the extra. So this is probably like a three to one or a four to one ruffle on the bottom of a layer that's four widths of 54 and this is all net. Everything above the black is tool, is different colors of tool and sparkle tool, and this is net. And then if we go deep down in this one, she's got a big old black panty, and, and you can probably see here, this is a taller panty. So, so we've added a little bit of height. We've added about three quarters of an inch to the top of the panty. And if we get way down in her crotch, you'll see there's a layer that's four or five inches which is holding the next layer away, which is about 10 inches. And then we've got the whole length of our skirt shows up. All the rest of them finish at approximately the same place. So there's the can-can layer. Then there's a layer of kind of purpley wine tool that's four widths of 54. So now you can see Here's, here's the seam between the panty and the bosque. So we have the Hollywood cut bosque is seamed right onto the top of the panty. Then we go wine. Then we go red. Then now stuff is starting to happen. Then we've got this diamond layer, uh, this sparkle tool. This is tool also with bagged diamonds sewn on it. We finished off the edges of all the diamonds. And that's got trim on it. And then... This is just striped lame, and the way the edge of this is finished off, this is fun to know too. We just cut the shape in tool, oh actually net. This shape is cut in net, and then we bag the edge of the lame. So there's like a 3 8 inch seam allowance turned in between here. So this is a piece of, a piece of netting with the lame, and that's the easiest way to finish off the edge because if we tried to fold this lame over and stitch it, it would just look like garbage. And then the top layer is a piece of solid black tool. And onto this solid black tool, all these spokes with diamonds, <laughs> diamonds are stitched. So that's, that's just another romantic skirt, but with more, with more fun going on. And look how cool that lame looks underneath there. So all the diamonds and spokes and points in the lame, you can see have all been thought out so that there's not a point. The way it hangs, the point doesn't cover up the diamond. Each point in the lame is framing a diamond. Planning. Planning always helps. But look how poofy and fun that is. Um, let's look at one more of these, and then we're going to dye a piece, and we're going to ruffle it, and then we're going to um, look at a panty, and then show you how to cut a gore if you want to do a gourd skirt. Um, I thought we had a gourd skirt from Houston Valley, but we don't. We sold it on our rummage sale, I think. Oh, poor Basil. Is he under there? Yeah, he's underneath there. Basil's under. Oh, I've got two more to show you. This one is similar to the butterfly, but without the can-can ruffle. So we're going to look underneath that one. And this is our, our snow costumes that Rachel did. And these are all our designs for Vero Beach Ballet. And these are just gorgeous. So instead of having a long line bosque with anything sewn on it, this is all sewn. Oh, 
we had these on display on a different dress form and we took the hooks off so it would fit a much larger dummy. Let me just put a clip on it. Um, so let's look at how these layers are working. Um, so this is still, essentially, this is, this is more like a hybrid. Like this is a romantic skirt, but everything is coming out below where the bosque would be, right? This doesn't have a bosque, but this gold, this would be, this is a built-in bosque. This is our imperial bodice pattern, which we just love. Um, so all of this zhuzh is put right onto the panty, but um, you can do a romantic skirt all completely on the panty. Just put your lines going down from the high hip of the panty and work your way down of the panty or work your way up. But if you're putting this on a panty, um, you don't want to dip the front and dip the back. You can dip the back, make the back a little longer like we were talking. But on a classical tutu panty, those short layers will dip them down to cover the crotch some. If you dip that down, you're going to end up with too much dip in the front. But this is four widths of the English net. It's six. Oh, ha! It's, this is six. The top two. Rachel said the top two are six. No wonder it's so full and gorgeous. So this is six widths of English net, and these have the extra piece at the side, right? I think, we'll look. Um, the, yeah, yeah. so, oh yeah, so this is a little different too, and we'll talk about that. So this is six widths of English net, six widths of really fine tulle. This is probably six too, because it's ruffled at the same the time. Top, top, the, yeah. She says the top few of these are six. Then it's probably five. five. Then it's five widths. And then the net, I'm guessing, is probably four. And they're all finishing at the same length. Then we have a medium one and a short one. So the short one is holding the medium away, and the medium is holding all the rest away. And on stage, these are just <laughs> incredible. Oh, it's all cut five. Okay, she said she cut this all five with, and then she laid her short layers down and just cut off the extra. And then she started smashing it in over after the short layers. But then if we come over here, oh, this is a sample one. What we did on the show show is we put a kicker in at the hips. Oh, you're right. No, it does. Right here. No. It doesn't. What, what, this was just a sample. Can you believe this is a sample? What we did for the show show to make it more old timey looking is we added just at the sides in between the short and medium one, just at the side, one more ruffle, but only like, you know, eight inches, six inches across so that for the actual show ones, we've got more of a pannier going on, kind of like a, an almost Marie Antoinette look. So the show ones, we purposely put a little bit at the side to make this real more old time, you know, different look. Play with the looks. So let's put this mint one on. Ah, look at that, so pretty. Should we look at it up close too, just because it's like so pretty, as I get grease from the dress form on it? Look at all that stuff, oh, love it. And this is, this is uh, dip dyed a little bit. You can see there's like a little bit of like gold, between this stuff, she dyed gold on there and then applicate all these different things on there and then covered it in jewels. Now this one is different because it doesn't have the ruffle on the edge of a layer. And this, this one is most like um, the tutu research we found for the, the later 1800s, like the 1870s, 80s, 90s. So it it has some layers holding it away from the body, but it doesn't have the layer with a ruffle on it. This was actually, we called this an Algerian skirt style, just because, I don't know why. So it's got netting. It's got short, medium, and longer netting to hold it away from the body, and then it just has tool. So if we got... If we get underneath her skirt, it's, it's none of it is lying against her body. It's all held out away from her body. 
And that makes a nice Bourneville look too. Like if anybody knows Flower Festival or um, any of August Bourneville's ballets, um, a lot of their original skirts were cut like this to come a little bit away from the body and be floofy rather than what we think of as a romantic skirt where there's tons and tons of stuff filling in the hem. The hem of this is pretty far away, is pretty far away from the girl. You can see there. Yeah, oh, that shows it pretty good. What? Yeah, you can see that's holding all of it, all of it away from her. So she just stays super lovely like a flower. Yeah. Does, is there anything somebody wants to see real quick on the stuff that we just looked at? We, yeah, a couple questions, a couple questions. Then we'll dye some stuff. I'm going to look for a piece of tool to dye while I answer some questions. Is there anything that can be done for a curly bottom hem, old romantic, over time with yucky? Somebody just said, how can you save a curled bottom yucky tool hem? Um, I know some people, oh, I just lost my mic. Some people will re trim off a little bit of the curl and fray check it. Um, I know some people say that hairspray works really, really well. Um, just know that the easiest way to fix that is to just cut it off and get back to like a new edge to shorten them. Or if you're able, you know, cut that, cut that layer a little bit shorter on all of them. And then if you can like put a new layer of tool over the whole thing, that's one thing you can do. Um, it's just that, that crawly tool is just a pain. You can also take, we had a can of it the other day. You can also take a little spray sizing. We get it from Manhattan Co. And just lightly spray, resize the tool and steam it in there to get the sizing to stick again. Um, and that helps. But you have to do that kind of like a layer by layer. So you would lift up the outermost layers, size the bottom, let it dry. Um, I do read some people say to use spray starch. It doesn't work at all because spray starch won't stick to nylon, but spray sizing from Manhattan Co. will. Do you ever quilt the tool around the bosque, like other maybe? Somebody asked if we quilt the tool around the bosque. Um, that's what I was showing you when we were putting pins through the waist. You can flatten stuff down. You can like smoosh it down to the waist if you want. To me, that's a design choice. So if I'm making a romantic skirt, but I'm stitching everything down so that a bodice can go over it and not flare out, I should just be putting the tool where the bottom of the bodice is going to be. Does that make that? I hope that made sense. Like, like you have to think that when, no matter what you're doing, you have design and functionality to join together. And I think a lot of people just figure there's one way to do one thing and they stick to it. Like we give some people convulsions when we tell them to try different things. Um, or experiment. experiment. So it's different every time. Like I've built several sets of the ballet Serenade, if anybody knows that. And that we do on rolls on a smocking pleater on the little machine that's got all the needles. And we roll miles and miles of tool through that put it on a, on a bosque that fits real flat to the body, and then we restitch all of that so that there's nice little channels. There's even some old time Karinska tutus where it's a powder puff tutu, so not flat, but not romantic. But then the tool goes all the way to the bosque, then it's stitched down flat to the bosque, and then comes out and makes a skirt. So try it all. How would you repair a rip on a tool? Oh, somebody asked how you repair rips. Um, it's easiest if you if you're not missing any of the tool you just bring you just overlap the two layers and do a tiny little zigzag to bring it back together or you butt your layers up and let your zigzag catch the two edges uh, depending on where the rip is sometimes it's easier to just like go into that layer if it's not on the outside and cut it off and just leave like maybe an upside down horseshoe where there's no tool because sometimes the rip is like sometimes the repair is more noticeable than just like cutting it out. Did you tack any of the skirts that you showed? None of those are tacked because I like when stuff goes, huh, huh, huh. And then you also, depending on where a skirt is getting used or the show, 
you also kind of find out like how the girls move in it, whether you need to add tax or stuff. Because if she's kind of like not committing to a jump and her legs are not finishing a movement, stuff might get caught. But if she's out there dancing, um, usually the skirt will return every time she finishes. Like we had 12 of those white and gold ones on a smaller stage with girls everywhere and they didn't need a single tack. But also you'll see that we're like, we don't leave a whole lot. Um, we don't leave a whole lot of stuff. You'll probably see like, we like to decorate stuff, right? Just this little piece of trim on there on the bottom of this will in motion keep that whole skirt organized because it's got a little bit of weight to it. So though none of those are tacked. That was the question. How is the can can ruffle attached? Because it's overlapped with the Um somebody asked how we attach the can can ruffle. Yeah, we have the edge of our net and then our ruffled piece, and we just stick over like a half an inch or the 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 top, the header of the ruffle, the seam allowance of the ruffle, and we just zigzag through it instead of making a seam. Because if you made a proper seam in that, it will hang kind of like forward or backward. What are the flowers? Um, somebody wanted to know what these flowers are. Uh, half of them are laser cut organza and the other half are uh, hydrangeas that Rachel cut apart. So this is like a piece of a hydrangea from Joanne's with a sequin in the middle. And then these other ones are laser cut organza, some with two and three layers. Oh, and some of these are gathered sparkle tool. So that flower is gathered sparkle tool. This flower is gathered sparkle tool. And what is the This is English net. This is ivory English netting. Um, the, the one you're gonna cover yeah, we're gonna do that here in two seconds. Let me, um, let me, let me just do a, a quick drawing. But I think everybody, um, everybody that that I sent the I sent everybody the class one classical tutu link to encourage you to buy parts two and three if you want but that's just a panty right so you have a panty then we have the bosque that we made you that's just so the ones we just looked at we have netting on the more Degas style one we have netting coming out pretty even on the front of the panty the back dips down a little bit then we have another layer on the panty and you, you should play with everything. Like, I think we have a lot of success and people like our looks on stage because it's kind of different every time. Like, like we, we're more concerned about like the design and the feel and the character rather than we made this skirt last time. By God, we're using it this time. So, so the panty, right? We've got our panty. Those Degas ones, we had a short layer, a longer layer. Then you can... Um, you can have a layer that comes right out of the seam where the panty joins, but you don't have to. And then those have a couple other layers up on the boss. And you, you, you'll you even see that sometimes a skirt, let me make another boss. You'll see sometimes in older ones or different companies, they'll have one short layer and then a couple long. And then I've seen romantic ones that the next layer is great big petals cut into the fabric. And then the next layer up from that can even be petals cut opposite. So you can like make a reverse romantic two, two, two. It doesn't just have to get longer and longer. You can get some cool stuff long to short. In fact, the Charlotte Ballet flower scene we built last year or the year before was reverse against the bottom of the boss. Those didn't have a panty, they wore a trunk. We had the longest layer of tulle. And then we had a medium layer of tool, and then another medium layer of tool, and then two short layers of tool, so that we had like fuchsia, pink, fuchsia. So you can make a romantic skirt completely inside out. It just makes more of like a hippie shape, but it's cool. Okay, let's dye a piece of tool so we can throw it in the dryer while we talk about gores. Let's talk about gores, baby. Um, so I'm going to just, so the, the stiffer net layers on all that stuff that we did is just diamond net. It's just plain old diamond net. And then let's get a piece of tool. Someone asked about, when you were talking about, did the 
mm-hmm. get caught in their lane. No, because um, somebody just asked if our inside out ones got caught in the girls' legs. I don't think they did. We weren't there for the show. I just saw them in rehearsal. Um, but we did tack with big long loops the medium to the long layer. So those, this inside out one that I just described, it had like three layers. The me, the middle layer was tacked with a loop to the short layer to help pull the short layer out of their legs when they were rotating. And I also find that sometimes it's the tights. Um, Back when I had to deal with ordering tights at Joffrey, I don't know if it was a dance skin tight or a capizio tight, but one of the companies like changed their tights mid-year and they were pilly and the tool really sticks to the pilly tights. Do you know, Sabina, which is the better tight? It changes all the time. Yeah, and the problem too is like you'll have like, tights that you absolutely love and you'll buy them for two years and then the next year the same catalog number tight is a completely different type of fabric. Um, so sometimes it's the tight. Like rarely have I had trouble um, where stuff is getting stuck between the, their legs. And then, you know, even if you have the best fabric, did I go over a pin? Oh, I almost went over a pin. I did, damn it, I ruined my rotary cutter. Um, even if you have the best fabric, the most perfect construction, um, sometimes what they're doing choreographically, they just end up shoving the skirt between their legs and twirling, and there's nothing you can do. Um, okay, I'm going to just show you one of the ways we love to dye stuff to make ombre looks. Um, it's been referred to now as brick dyeing because we offset the colors. Actually, let me cut this in half so I can do just that. We're gonna just pretend this is two big, beautiful, long layers. And let's go over to my little dye pot. This is just fun too. Some of this is a repeat for some folks, but some of it's new. I've gotta unclip my microphone so I can get over there. And then we'll look at how you can cut gores and the idea behind cutting gores. Um, so, uh, everybody loves ombre, like right? Ombre is like so incredibly popular right now. I'm gonna just dye some purple. So this can be on a classical tutu or a romantic tutu. It can be as long or as short as you want. Can you show the water or your what? Face? You can show the water and my my belly. So I just have some purple writ dye, and I'm not here to to tell you what kind of dye to use or make you dye masters. I just want to show you the idea. And of course, I don't have anything to stir it with. I can use this screwdriver. Um, I'm just going to whip it up with a screwdriver there. And I just have a, a roasting a frying pan here, an electric frying pan. But if you want to make stuff look ombre, decide like where, if this were a long skirt, decide where you want your original color and then where you want your ombre to start, and you can just dye a point. So by dyeing a triangle, when we get, and I'll gather this quick. By dyeing a triangle, when we gather this up, the, the, uh, your, the human eye will make an ombre because there's less color at, at the bottom and more color at the top. So if this were my top layer and I just wanted a purple ombre skirt, here I dyed a triangle in the middle of the layer. On the next one, I would dye triangles on the outside edges of the layer so that I don't have my triangle hitting in the same place when it's gathered. So now I'm going to dye a triangle on the outside. You can do spokes, triangles. You can mix and match colors. You can make some layers go further down. Um, so let me turn off my roaster. Um, put this on a on a drying rack, like on a wooden or a plastic clothes drying rack, and really let it dry. You can also, not so much with the tool, but with netting, you can uh, safety pin your packet together and then just throw it in the dryer for a couple minutes. But we usually don't throw the tool in the dryer because it's a little too delicate. And this was hot enough that I'm not worried about like having to heat set the color in. It's in there. And it's going to be less intense 
uh, when we open it up. So let me ruffle these really quick. So, so I've got two things, but you'll see when I open this one up, see, I, see what I meant by if this were my top, I've got a triangle in the middle, and my other one I have a triangle on the outsides. Just if we put the triangle in the middle on every layer, what will happen when we ruffle it? We'll have more of a petal shape or a triangle in the middle, but that's pretty too. Like do a sample where you try to make all the points match, and then it will look like the color is making a petal. Um, Let's ruffle this. Oh, everybody's lunch looks so good. Well, Rick's not eating. Rick, are you going to eat? You should eat. After this clown. Just one more clown costume. How many more clown costumes? Oh, that little vest is cute with the pom-poms. Holy smoke. These were for clients that I fired, but somehow, somehow we're making clown. Um, so I'm going to just ruffle my two chunks together, and then we'll hold it up and, and look at it. This is damp. Don't ruffle it while it's damp. I do too, right? Rachel just said, I ruffle it when it's damp. Um, yeah, just oil your machine when you're done. Uh, so I'm going to ruffle two layers at once. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to just do a couple feet. Oh, except I put the ruffling foot on and my machine is on zigzag. Let's make this really tight, too. Let's make it dense. And, and we, we just love this dye technique. Love, love, love it. Couple more inches and then we'll look. So look how pretty that is. Does the color even show up on camera? Yeah, so you can see by dyeing the triangle with the fat part of the triangle at the top, it looks like it's ombre because the color, there's more often color and the color is closer together at the top and then it fades away to nothing instead of dipping it over and over and over. And the other thing to watch with the tool is to kind of work quick with it with the dye. Like if we if we dyed this a couple times or really let it sit in the water, all the sizing leaks out of the tool and you end up with a really floppy, dead um, chunk of tool. But we just love doing that. We do it all the time. All right, let's look at cutting gores and cut some gores and then and then that'll be about it actually rick would you hand me one of the little mini dress forms i think we can do this in miniature more successful than we can do it in maximature full size we're going to do the little gore talk in half scale oh her bottom fell off so i have my half scale dummy Hard to believe she's a size six, but she is. Um, so let me draw on paper first. I think I'm gonna need to get a marker board because it's so much fun for this class. Um, so gores, right? What's a gore? A gore is just a panel that is wider at the bottom uh, than it is at the top. So if I was making a Victorian walking skirt, my gores would look kind of like this. There's my center front my side front and my side back and back so um that that's a victorian walking skirt essentially this would be flat on the body and you can make a romantic skirt where the front's flat too with gores then we're just adding more fullness as we go around to the back so that there's more hanging off of her body so for a romantic gourd skirt usually it's the same gore the whole way around and also kind of think in your head like what happens when you make a circle skirt, right? When you have a great big circle, it looks like an egg, and there's the yolk. When you have a circle with a circle cut out, then you get really amazing fullness. You get just tons and tons of fullness from a circle at the hem, but what's nice is it's fitted at the waist. 
So making a gourd um, romantic skirt's the same kind of idea. You're, we're going to want some gathers at the waist. Like we don't want the tool to just be flat at the waist or our layers to be flat at the waist because you would just see right through to the bosque and see all the stitching and everything. But you want some gathers at the waist. So there's there's a couple ways to think about it. Would you grab me the circumference ruler? I've done these where I just take my square, I just fold up squares of tool. So I just fold up like six squares together. So I've got like one, two, three, four, four, four layers of tool folded back and forth. And then I figure out how long I want it to be. So I want it to be 36 inches or whatever, right? Then I'm going to go up from there 36 inches. But then to make the hem the same the whole way and to get a, a gore, my top has to be curved also. So whatever measurement is going on with my bottom needs to relate to my top. So if you know the girl's waist is 24 inches and you want where this gores are joining the waist to be three, you need to do it like at least three times. I'm going to say three times gather looks the best. Um, figure out 24 times 3, that's 60, 72, 72 inches. So if I wanted my waist to be 3 times 24, I'm going to figure out how big is my waist of my gore and then how big is my hem. But 72, what's an easy thing? Let's just say the top is 12. 72 divided by 12, that's easy. I already know it. That's six, six gores. So this would be 12 inches. So now we'll have 72 inches gathered to the waist. This can be whatever you want. You can have a gore that's a whole half of a circle. So it's 12 inches fitting the waist and then a whole half circle. That's like three yards. So three yards times six, that's 216 inches. So the hem of this would be 216 inches. It's up to you to decide how full you want it. So the more circumference or the more you have in your pattern piece, the fuller the hem is going to be. So if you were doing this with a romantic skirt and going up every inch up the bosque, you would go 35 inches, 36 inches, 37 inches, and 38 inches at the waist. Or a smidge longer if you want to make sure that, you know, that if anything, they're a hair longer than the last. Yes? Can you put a gourd top layer onto the rectangle? Oh, yeah. Somebody asked, can you put a gourd layer onto rectangular layers? And we've done that more than once. Our whole snow scene for Houston is two gourd layers of English net with... Um, rectangles underneath. So if you're if you're just wanting a very full overlayer, think about just cutting two or three half circles and putting them over your tool. In, or you can cut a whole bunch of smaller gores. As long as the bottom is fuller than the top, you're going to get that effect. So a, a gore just means that the bottom is fuller than, than the top. So you can make it as full or not as full as you want. And we sell this handy thing to make circumferences. So it's just got like a pivot point. And uh, if anybody hears from Australia, we're having the darndest time getting stuff shipped to you successfully through the Chicago Mail. We're working on it. Um, this just has a point for zero. So if I wanted to make one full circle skirt, I know that uh, my waist is 24 inches so I'm going to find 24 and draw a complete circle and then draw the outside hem of that circle to make my full waist but if I want just a half circle to fit the whole waist of a 24 inch girl I need to draw a half circle that's 48 inches because I'm only using a half circle but you can make circles and gather them also. So if you have circles or wedges that are gathered, it's going to be 
still fitted at the waist but fuller at the bottom and we'll cut some in mini too but I do want to show you somewhere where I think people do this wrong um because I had somebody explain to me how they were shown and and they couldn't figure out something that was happening they were taking their rectangle of tool you make it as wide as you want you can deal with one at a time or fold it up and all they were doing um one thing they said is they were just cutting trapezoids like this what happens when it's gathered is this line from here to here is longer than down the middle so your hem ends up looking like that if you just cut a trapezoid so if you're fine with that it might be a design choice make a trapezoid to have not a trapezoid you have your square and whatever distance this is you need the same distance at the outside so you really are cutting a slight curve now with tool you're going you, i would say do an experiment because if you cut a ton of tool in complete half circles number one you're going to be pulling your hair out trying to get it to all lay on the table but if you cut tool with all half circles if you have a tool that's spongy in one direction you might end up with spongy and spongy here and here and then not spongy so what's going to happen is all of your seams are going to grow and your hem will eventually wherever there's a seam your hem is going to go bleh down to the seam and it's going to bleh down to the next seam so if you have slightly narrower gores and more of them you're less likely to have this problem so let's cut some gores out of some it's out of some net or some english english stuff or some tool um, so the the center of your gore needs to be the same length as the middle of your gore is this that's netting i thought i just had a piece of what i wanted um, Ah, I'll cut it out of the English net because it'll show up better on camera. It's not so thin. So if this was, if this is my bolt, right, this is my bolt of fabric, I'm going to run it off the bolt. And if you were cutting, if you are cutting half circles, you're going to cut them the long way. So if I was cutting a half circle, I'm going to fold it back like that. I'm going to figure out how long is it to my hem and i'm going to draw so this we're imagining i'm using this gizmo um, i'm going to figure out how long it is to my waist and how long it is to my hem and then i'm going to draw on my waist and i'm going to draw on my hem so we're cutting full half circles we also have like a, a skirt webinar for like chiffon skirts and stuff and we go through the costume technician handbook and draft their skirt and make a victorian skirt and we talk about bias um which is which is good info too if anyone's interested so now we have a gore here point it more at my girl so now what we have is a gore or two half circles that are laying on this. So see already how full and huge this is at the waist, or how full and huge it is at the hem, but not at the waist. I'm gonna seam these two together and gather them. So your gore doesn't have to be this whole size. It might be this size. It might be half of that, or it might even be half of that again. Just know that as you're working, oh, is somebody having pizza? I smell pizza. It smells so good. I want to go have fancy lunch. I'm going to the opera tonight. I shouldn't complain. So you may, so we cut that one with a whole half circle. You may also end up just cutting your gores like this off of the goods this direction. Make a sample and see what happens. That's also a gore. It doesn't have to be a half circle. That shape, which you can see in the mat, that's also a gore. 
you may also, depending on the sample and what you discovered, you may also end up cutting gores like this. And actually what's great, when you cut gores like this, you can fit them side by side, right? So I've cut that gore out. He slides down. Now I have the space to cut my next gore out, even though I have a snag in there. So I've cut that one out. That cut makes my next gore. And it all nestles together much better. And then you don't have any waste. So if you're doing this in tool, Get somebody to help you fold up the tool whichever direction you want to work and, and it'll be more successfully cut out. But the main thing is to remember that whatever the middle of your thing is should be the same length as the outside of your thing. So let's gather the two I just did. If I haven't lost them. I'm going to stitch them together and then I'm going to gather them. We did a ballet choreographed by, uh, I can't think of it, it's at the Joffrey, and we made these silver gray 16 piece bodices, and all the girls had like 12 half circle gores, so they didn't, they didn't have layers underneath it, it was just one amazingly full top layer, I can't think of the name of it, I'm going to look it up, and then I'll post a picture if I can find it. Ah, oh, it's gonna drive me nuts. And we put clear packing tape on their shoe on the tops of their shoes so they would shine. So the more you have at the waist, the fuller the whole thing will be. It's like having a gathered circle skirt, but you don't have to cut a full circle. Now let me ruffle the top edge. And you may also want it to just barely fit the waist. You know, you might not want gathers at the waist. So, so you're going to have to do some math. So let me gather my top edge now. But this will make a super duper full, beautiful hem. And that was a good question earlier. Somebody said, can you just put a gourd thing over rectangles? And you absolutely can. Now let's put this on our girl. These half size dress forms are great. You can figure out so much stuff. Um, so how pretty is that? So you have that now. And we still have the look of a romantic tutu with gathers at the waist, but we have this super duper full beautiful hem. So if you were doing this, you can get away with a couple less layers, I would say. You could do this, you could do one an inch lower, and in, one an inch lower. You could do this just with one layer of gathered tool underneath. Um, if I was doing this with just tool rectangles underneath, I might cut my tool rectangle maybe six or seven widths of 54, just so the tool volume is relating a little bit more to my gourd my gourd layers volume. But it's it's essentially just that. Does anybody have any questions? We're going to send out a couple more patterns, and I'm making a handout to like better explain that thing that we were doing yesterday. But remember, you can just cut it all straight. Um, it's just the ideas and reorganizing the ideas and coming up with the way you want to do stuff. Yeah. My propaganda hat. Now I look cool. No? No questions. No questions. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, yesterday's recording of this is like 92% done. Uh, so that should be sent out. Actually, you know what? I think I did send it. I did. It was done. Um, this, this recording should be done processing tonight. So you'll get this tomorrow. And I'll put both of them together. For the new folks, please remember, do not share your recordings. They are monitored, and we can see when somebody who didn't buy the class is watching it, and I send them a bill. On that note, have a great day. Hi, Madonna. Bye.
feel like I should just unplug the microphone every time. Where's the pen? I don't know. I'll look for it. Oh, it's over here. No, yeah, it is. I tried to use it like a sharpie.